everyone, my name is Ada and today we're in the beaver enclosure at Wildwood and actually we've got two enclosures here. Um, so we've got a pond to my left and a pond to my right and we have a few beavers here at Wildwood. Uh, namely, some of you might have met Bertha recently. She's our oldest beaver and she's nearly 13 years old. Now, that's about middle-aged for a beaver. So in captivity, they can live up to about 24 years. And as always in the wild, they won't be living quite as long. But beavers are found in wetlands, and believe it or not, you can find them around Kent as well. Um, although they're not a protected species, they are really, really, really important species for the environment. So usually you'll be finding them in wetlands because that's where they have their favorite food. Wanna guess what it is? No, it's not fish. A lot of people will say fish because they think, oh yeah, it's a mammal that lives in the water. Uh, no, beavers are not like otters. They don't eat fish. Actually, they're herbivores. So they just eat plants and they don't eat trees either. They cut down trees, but their favorite thing to eat is really nice young saplings. So for them, fresh spring growth, which they'll be finding a lot of lately, is exactly their favorite food. And they find a lot of that in a wetland because they'll have a lot of wetland plants to munch down on and young trees as well. Or the stuff underneath the bark of a growing tree. Um, sort of the sap before it gets sticky. If you've ever peeled a, st a stick away after a storm, you'll know that it's quite fluid and uh, quite fresh smelling. Well, beavers absolutely love that. Now, beavers are rodents, and they're actually the second largest rodent in the UK. Uh, the largest is an introduced rodent. It's the koipu, which is a relative of the beaver, but beaver is the largest native rodent. So if you have any rodents at home, for example, any hamsters or guinea pigs, you might have noticed that they kind of have yellowy big buck teeth. Now, those buck teeth are ever growing. That means they will keep on growing throughout the animal's life. And this is the same for beaver's teeth. Now they're yellow for a good reason, and it's not because they don't go to the dentist. They're yellow because the enamel on the front of their teeth is different from the enamel on the back of their teeth. On the front of their teeth, and on beavers it's actually so yellow it's orange, it's full of iron. And iron is really strong, it's metal, right? So the enamel on the front of their teeth is stronger than the stuff on the back, and that means that their front tooth can act as a chisel. So, although their tooth keeps on growing throughout the course of their life, they also keep on wearing it away as they chew through wood. And this works out really, really, really well for them because they're chiseling away at the enamel and their tooth keeps on growing so they always have really sharp front teeth to cut down trees. If you were to look inside a beaver's mouth, and good luck trying to do that, but if you were, their back teeth are perfectly smooth and flat. A little bit like an old horse's teeth, they're really, really good at grinding plant matter. And we also have flat back teeth, and I do encourage you to use that to grind plant matter. We have molars as well. So we're a little bit similar to beavers in that we have the molars, but we don't have those front teeth. So why are beavers cutting down trees if they're not eating the trees? Well, put quite simply, a beaver is, unfortunately for them, still a prey animal, but they're quite clever about it. They're not really fast, they're not really graceful, but they are pretty clever in their strategy to get away from potential predators. So what they do is they will build their home, a lodge in the middle of a pond. In fact, it's a little bit like a castle because it has a moat around it. And even better than that, it has an underwater entrance. So when a beaver has built his home in the middle of a pond with an underwater entrance, that protects him or her from any potential predators. In the wild, normally you'd be finding potential predators such as wolves or lynx and even an eagle owl, for example, could catch a young beaver. So the beavers want to be able to get away from these predators and none of these predators are going to be able to fit through their little underwater tunnel to get into their lodge. It's actually quite a nice little home for a beaver inside that lodge. It's got two rooms. So their front room, their lounge, if you will, is where they dry off. And then they have an additional room, a bedroom, and that's where they sleep and where it's nice and dry. And if you come to Wildwood, you'll see that we also have our two beaver lodges are built exactly that way with an entrance to one room that leads on to another room for the beaver to sleep nice and dry in there. So beavers will build their lodge out of sticks and logs and they'll patch it with mud and they'll make it quite waterproof. But I think beavers are most famous for building dams. A lodge is not a dam. 
A dam, when a beaver builds it, is pretty similar to what a dam does when a human builds it. It stops at the stream. Because remember I said that beavers need to live in the middle of a pond that's deep enough to build their lodge with an underwater entrance. So, if they don't have that pond, that's no problem, they just make it. So what they're going to do is they're going to stop up a stream. So they're going to be cutting down trees to build a dam, and they're going to be filling that with sticks and branches and a little bit of mud, just enough to stop up a stream so that the water starts to back up and form a pond. And once that pond is formed, they can build themselves a nice cozy lodge in the middle of that as well. Now, remember I said that beavers have a really important impact on the environment. Well, one of the reasons they are really important for the environment is because they are causing rivers to meander. So a river that flows straight will flow faster. And as it goes faster and deeper, it is a more dangerous river for humans and for other animals. But also, it means that when it floods, there's nowhere for the water to go. So it's a lot quicker to flood. Now a meandering river is one that has a lot of bends and twists and turns. And with the channels that beavers build when they're busy uh, changing their wetland homes for their own uses, what will happen is they're going to cause rivers that might be normally flowing a bit straighter to start to have little bends and twists and turns in them. And in effect, that is slowing down the flow of water. So that means when it's really a heavy rainstorm like we had in February, uh, the river is going to be less quick to flood. So very, very helpful. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very, very helpful, not just for humans, but for animals as well. Additionally, I did say that beaver dams are pretty similar to human dams, but unlike human dams, they do let a little bit of water through. They leak a little bit. And actually, that's not a bad thing because what's happening is that water that's leaking through is getting filtered. Essentially, the beavers have built great big water filters and that water that leaks through their dams gets cleaned of any debris and a lot of the stuff that might accumulate. So not only is the water not flooding, but it's coming out cleaner. And finally, living in wetlands, beavers are building a lot of channels. As they're going around, they're going to be cutting down some plants in their path, some reeds and things like that. And as they're doing that, they're making a lot of patchy habitat for all kinds of other wetland animals to live there. Animals such as wetland birds. Um, oop, cutting this out. <laughs> they're making room for a lot of other animals to live there. So effectively, this is why we call beavers ecosystem engineers. They're the one animal apart from humans who take the time to change their environment to suit their needs. But as a result, they're actually having a really positive impact on a lot of other animals as well. Now finally, one last thing about the beaver and probably one of my favorite facts is their fur. They have this amazing waterproof fur. It's really, really soft to the touch, um, but it's two layers. So close to their body, they've got short, fluffy layers of fur, uh, really thick and dense, a bit like wearing a fleece. It's there to keep them warm, to trap air, and to prevent water from reaching their skin. And in between those short, fluffy hairs, they have long, oily ones, and oil repels water. So a bit like wearing a raincoat on top of a fleece. And this is really useful because, of course, as I said, even though beavers like to sleep in their nice dry bedrooms, they are going to be spending a lot of their time in the water, and nobody likes to be cold and soaking wet. So they actually have their fur waterproof to help to keep them dry. And then, once they're inside their cozy lodge, they can dry off in their lounge and then go to bed. Beavers are mostly nocturnal animals, so if you're really lucky, you'll see them usually at dawn and dusk. Um, but the best way to see them, of course, is to come back to Wildwood once we're open again. Thank you very much.